In the winter of 2022, athletes from around the world are gathering in the depths of Swedish Lapland to take on one of the toughest races on the planet. Starting in the village of Övekalix, athletes will then go as far as 500 kilometers on snow-covered trails through primeval forests and on frozen rivers and lakes through Europe's last wilderness. We have uh, 40 competitors uh, from many different countries, France, um, Germany, uh, we have also Malaysia, Vietnam, United States, Spain, so many countries. Uh, they have to tackle uh, two different distances. They can choose from 185 kilometers and 500 kilometers. We have as disciplines um, uh, going on foot. Um, you can also use snowshoes. We have skiing and fat biking. So I'm not thinking about podium or anything. It's just I don't want to put more pressure on myself than the race in itself is, uh, is quite hard. So um, yeah, finish is my main goal. Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing? Good. Getting anxious? Get going? Yeah, so welcome to the Montaigne Lapland Arctic Ultra 2022. Happy to have you, have you all here with us um, this year. He, the winner has to be, of course, very fit. I mean, that's somebody usually who is capable to go long hours very fast. So the, the winner is fit, but also mentally fit because uh, there will be things happening uh, also to the people in the front. Um, and uh, yeah, a little bit of luck maybe as well. Uh, and, and then they can win this. My three tips for competitors to start is to not go too fast, um, to just start at a slower pace, um, to take it one step at a time um, and to rest when they need to rest. Those would be the big ones at the beginning. Yeah, my goal is in this way is um, just finish it because I never did something like that. So I did ultras but not in snow. So really don't push too hard, enjoy and go to the finish line. That would be my first goal for that race. This is amazing, isn't it? We've got 40, 50 people about to hurl themselves into the, La into the Lapalandian Arctic wilderness. It's going to be fantastic. I've spent nine months training for this, so uh, hopefully everything's ready. But yeah, my body's a little nervous. It'll be good to get going. Very nervous, very excited. Kind of just uh, want to get going now. But yeah, hoping, I mean, it's a beautiful day. So, and we had the Northern Lights last night, which I kind of think was Mother Nature saying good luck. So that was pretty awesome. Look at the sky, the sky is blue. Uh, the friend is here. Yeah, it's Copacabana, you know, we are ready now to, to, to start, uh, a little bit uh, stress, uh, pressure, but it's okay. I'm a little afraid, but uh, I will go, I will start and I do the, my best. Oh man, I'm freaking ready to go, man. I want to go, I got all this cooped up energy, I just want to, I feel like a racehorse in the corral. And they're off, boom! I just want to get going now, I want to start, it's been waiting for days, now I want to go. Uh, I'm turning my phone off, that's it, now no more phone for, for seven days. Yes, I'm, I'm feeling very well, a little bit nervous, but I hope uh, Robert gives us a sign that we can start because it's time to go. Okay, countdown from 10 with me, all right? 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one, go!
competitors are taking their first strides from other colleagues, embarking on a journey where they're not yet completely aware of the threatening conditions and challenges that lie ahead. The 185 kilometer racers will go in a loop from other colleagues to the north and back again, crossing through the Arctic Circle. The 500 kilometer racers continue the race in a second loop of 315 kilometers. First heading north, then back to cross the finish line in Avakalix. I don't want to happen that anybody gets hurt. That's the main objective. Um, yes, it's normal that people have sports injuries, uh, a bad knee or, or an ankle, uh, but I don't want anybody to get seriously hurt. I don't want anybody to get hypothermia or frostbite or anything else that's serious. That's my, always my, my biggest hope. Um, it's always still hard at the beginning. The athletes uh, need to find their rhythm. Um, so the first days will be decisive. If people get over those, they will likely see the finish, but not all will see the finish line. That hill was that hill was a big workout, but oops, I think that's the biggest hill in the race, so it's good to have that over with. Yeah, it's my first experience in the snow. Um, um, I think the sled is quite heavy. It's better when the snow is a bit icy, so then it's like you know, a really speedy one. I pushed the bike in 20 centimeter pieces. I, I pushed it. It was horrible. In the checkpoint, um, you get a medical check, you can. Um, replenish um, your water, you can eat a little bit, um, but of course they also check your time um, until now um, and um, so you can see how your progress was. Awesome, yeah, good to be done. I'm going to get some food and fill up my water bottles and charge to the next checkpoint. You know, I, I'm just going and uh, when I feel that I need to get sleep, then I go to sleep. I don't have like target, target. Yeah, it's good to be on, you know, next checkpoint, but you know, you don't know, never. So people want to check my inwish, that they can track me if I have some problems. Um, want to see my battery for my headlamps, check them. And yeah, then I can go to Jokfall. The race continues around the clock. Competitors are left alone in the darkness of the Laplandian wilderness, with nothing but their headlight to guide them through the night. The temperature at this time of year is an average high of negative three degrees Celsius dropping as low as negative 20 degrees Celsius at night. However, slightly warmer temperatures this year create a whole new challenge for the competitors, as the soft snow makes it difficult to move on the trail. I 
I'm feeling great. Uh, it was a really short night, so I have just one hour sleep, yeah, just for a power nap. And then I said, oh, come on, 18 kilometers to go to York Fall. And yeah, then I arrived at 3 a.m. And I'm now at kilometer 85. Um, maybe I can reach 140 or 150. So that means that you have, yeah, that you did the distance of three days in two days. In the Lapland Arctic Ultra, you can do it in three ways. To race the 500 or the 185 case, you can do it by foot, by fat bike or by skis. So it could be a challenge um, changing for every participant because when the trail gets soft, it's really hard for the bikers and also for the, uh, for the runners. For skis, maybe excellent uh, conditions, uh, but in the cold, when the trail is getting harder uh, for the people by foot would be great conditions so you can pushing hard not too hard but keep going keep going to get some kilometers 500k 10 days for a runner that sounds like doable but for walking you really have to keep on moving the whole day and if it takes me a lot of time with putting up the stove and things like that, pulling on the bivy and things like that. So that takes time and I think I'm going to put much pressure on myself to not waste too much time. I'm really, really nervous. Um, but that's also a fact that keeps me, keeps me going, I think. If, I, if, it, if I'm just cool and relaxed and say, well, I can do it all, then maybe I won't finish. So I kind of need this excitement and uncertainty. Good. See, it's a nice hard pack. I like that. Makes it much easier to go when it's hard pack. Just hope it stays like this, you know? How are you? I'm fine. It was a tough day. I'm happy to meet Russ. We're going to arrive at Jokfall. We will sleep two hours or less. Missing the heat? Yeah. <laughs> I'm from Greece. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Missing a lot the heat, man. Yeah, I think maybe another like 10 km to Yofa. Yeah, hopefully I can get some rest and some good food there. Yes, I quit the race. Not so nice, but it is so. I can't change it. I had problem, I had problem with my tires. My winter wheel, my winter tire was, was broken. Um, uh, it was a material problem. It's the second that I had. I changed the tire at home and uh, now we saw after the flight that the second one was broken too. Absolutely. So, so it was soft all the time, but right now we had a lot of fresh, uh, fresh snow, and it's 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 really hard to ride now. Yeah. So I had to push so many times. So yesterday at the evening when I started to the checkpoint number three, so I was counting with three and a half hour, and it took me seven hours because I had to push for four and a half hour. So at the moment, it's it's it cost a lot of energy to get forward. The better feeling will be definitely when I finish the 500. Then it will be perfect at the Colix. Uh, 
the night was uh, quite heavy. Uh, I uh, was a little bit of sleepwalking, so I decided to uh, go on site and uh, make camp. Sleep uh, two hours, let my feet dry, and it uh, gave me really a, a good kick to start the day uh, again. I'm here uh, at the moment um, checking athletes on our tracking site that was made by Fialcom. And how this works is we've got uh, the inReach, the Garmin inReach, and it sends positions via satellite. For us, it's important to know when the athletes arrive at checkpoints. They can send us messages and, of course, also alert us if there is a real emergency. Uh, if we have any doubts on where they've been, I can speed this up. Um, we know when they last updated their positions. Uh, we see our shelters and checkpoints um, and that way uh, it's, it's easier for a checkpoint crew. They know when to be up and when to be ready. Here at the finish line we'll know when to expect them um, and we can be more efficient and uh, save time that way. Next step is Polar Circle Cabin. 31k. I hope I uh, can push further. So it's 100k to the next official checkpoint. I'm learning that <clears throat> the, the value of sleep in these ultras is huge. Like one hour of sleep seems to save you two hours because you can go faster, you're stronger. So it's so tempting to skimp on sleep and just keep charging, pushing, 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 but it catches up to you. At the end of the last section, I was just, I could barely stand up. I was so sleep tired. We are in Sol Solvayarvi with Rush. Uh, we just complete almost 30K. And we will prepare a meal to eat and we will start a fire and after we will keep walking until Lipo Yarvi. There's been many ups and downs today, um, but it was better than yesterday, so yesterday I was really struggling. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, today I was able to even run a bit because um, I got rid of some things from my sled, mm, put them in a drop bag and um, it's not that heavy anymore. So it's not like pulling Queen Mary 2 behind me, it's more like uh, a speedboat now. While on the trail, sleep deprivation is a big challenge. Many athletes get only a few hours of sleep during the entire race. When it's time to rest, athletes put up a bivy or a tent to protect themselves from the harsh conditions in nature. I don't know, I don't know. I prefer uh, go step by step. And uh, now the, the next checkpoint, and uh, when uh, I stay in the next checkpoint, I, I know, I decide. Yeah, I think today I got 50% cycling, 50% pushing, and yeah. But now it's it's getting much better. It's getting better now. Yeah. Going safely to other colleagues, that's the most important thing. So the, the trail changes every me, every meter. So getting safety to other colleagues, that's the most important thing. Yeah. 
And it's it's never been since I started with with extreme races like that. It's never been that I win something or being the first one or something like that. It's always about the challenge. It's always about the beauty from the, from the nature and the country. And this is all what counts for me. Yeah, thank you. But when you when you could be the first, it's a big big plus. <laughs> of course. Move as fast as my legs can carry me to as far as the finish line. Uh, I should get there about four o'clock, I think. Are you still trying to beat Tibby? Uh, I'm going to have a crack at it, yeah. How's he going? Where is he? I think I'll do it. A little bit tired maybe, but uh, no, I feel great, absolutely great, yeah, it was, it was an amazing experience. It was definitely the trail, it was so, so, so soft, it was so wet and it was really, really hard to, to, to ride a bike there. The trail, all, all the other things were, were joy, but the trail was, was absolutely the biggest challenge. You, you can learn new things on your, on your own, even it's by yourself, so... There are a lot, of, a lot of things you can learn in races like that. Yeah, it goes to Robert and his whole volunteer team, because without Robert and his whole volunteer team, a race like that would not be happened. Never, ever, no chance. So a big thank you to you guys that make this happen. Uh, I don't doubt my body for this, but it was an adventure for mind, First, but for mind and then for body and for all. Ah, no, no. So, such a race, you can, you can uh, think about this. You can win. This can happen. Everything wrong uh, for last uh, five uh, kilometer. When you have uh, another sportal, you they fight for for a place. Then it's a challenge. Why? Very proud, very happy, very magic, and uh, so so happy to have finished and uh, incredible. Happy, happy, tired, wrecked, sore, sore feet. I've got lots of blisters on my feet and sore, sore knees. Um, but overall, yeah, delighted. I had a great experience. Really loved, um, loved being part of the first time the race has been in Sweden. I think the Swedish people really, really were fascinated. They were also friendly. I, I really liked that. Um, and the scenery is beautiful. It would have been nice if it was a little bit colder to give us that Arctic feel. But um, overall, yeah, I'm on a high and happy to, have, happy to have completed it and been here for the first year. The biggest challenge probably f was this this part from like <laughs> the finish line. I could see the bridge from like th three miles away, and I felt like I would never get there. Also, get, uh, going north to the polar circle, we just had a b big day, and then I I didn't rest, so I hadn't slept for 36 hours. So I was like trying to get as far as the polar circle and stay ahead of the, my competitor Tibby. Um, that was that was a tough night, but um, yeah, there was lots of little battles. 
but uh, they're probably the two biggest ones. Uh, I think that takes a while for me to realize. Well, that was the finish line. It's pretty cool. 500k is my longest distance so far and um, today has been amazing. Uh, every day was like a bit special. I had my ups and downs, but um, yeah, finally managed how to run with the thing. Mm. Mm, yeah, coming to the checkpoints was also always a highlight because you are out there pretty much on your own, like uh, all day. And then at the checkpoint, you are welcomed like so warm. And um, yeah, I will miss those guys that are always like cheering on us and uh, keeping us warm and fed and uh, yeah, I don't know, it's a mixture of everything. It's kind of hard to tell uh, now, but um, the event was um, special. I mean, the race has been fantastic. The feedback uh, was very good, or has been very good. We still have a couple of people out there, so it's not a, a wrap yet, but yeah, a lot of help, a lot of smiles, of course also some tough decisions, a few people who couldn't finish or start, but overall uh, everybody very happy here at the Grand Arctic Hotel finish line. No, really good, really good. And coming in, there's like northern lights, the stars were out, the moon was out, it was really beautiful. So I'm going to remember that. That was really beautiful. 36 competitors entered Montaigne Lapland Arctic Ultra 2022. 30 crossed the finish line. For the finishers, the greatest victory was to overcome the mental and physical challenges of completing the race through Europe's last wilderness. <laughs>